just puts me on a different. Um, <clears throat> he puts me on a different sort of track. Yeah, yeah. Um, because of it's the, my last uh, my last talk before <clears throat> I won't be coming back till after Divine Mercy Sunday. <clears throat> Just to let you know, excuse me, <clears throat> shutting down before Easter, for Easter I should say, and uh, <clears throat> because excuse me. Mary and I want to um, pray the hours of the passion uh, more intensely over the next two weeks and uh, we want to just be totally focused on on the passion of our Lord and um, to do that I have to shut down all my Zooms because I've got several others that I do as well as this one <clears throat> which you don't know about, but they're individual Zooms. And um, so I need to have total focus on Jesus. Uh, we're always focused on Jesus, but you know what I mean, don't you? And I'm sure, I'm sure you all feel the same way. I feel it's very important that Jesus is uh, suffering intensely now on the earth because, <clears throat> excuse me, he is still in, he is still incarnated. Mary darling, can yes. you get me to move in quarter? <clears throat> He's still incarnated on the earth, right? He's not, he's in heaven, but he's still incarnated on the earth. Yeah. So in, in his incarnations wherever they are he is still able to suffer <clears throat> especially in every consecrated host okay so we're coming up to holy thursday night and he wants us <clears throat> divine will people his little children to be very, very close to him, very close to him. Thank you, Mary. He wants us to be very close to him now because this Easter is a particularly important Easter. And this is why um, I'm shutting down from Zoom. I'm not shutting down, but I'm shutting down from Zoom so I can focus carefully on Jesus and be very, very close to him. Now, if you are living in full possession of the divine will by continuous fusion, that's how you live in him fully. You're living with him in every consecrated host. Did you know that? <clears throat> You're not separated from him. It's not you outside there and him inside there. Wherever Jesus is, you are. That's only if you live in the fourth degree, right? When you're not at that stage, you're still, there's still you and Jesus. <clears throat> so I want you to be aware that wherever Jesus is in the consecrated host, particularly during the holiday season when many Catholics, so-called Catholics, will come to Mass, you know, the, the Christmas and Easter Catholics that come to Mass <clears throat> twice a year, um, there, there are many people that will sacrilege the Jesus 
by just going up to communion without receiving confession or preparing themselves and not having been dedicated and devoted to him the rest of the year, <clears throat> it's a terrible sacrilege around the holiday seasons that occurs. And you are living with him inside the host. So what happens when Jesus descends into the hearts and souls of those, well, let's say the souls of those people <clears throat> who are in a state of sin, in darkness? He's descending <clears throat> in some cases into hell because we call it the darkness that visits upon the soul who is in a state of mortal sin and goes to communion. Jesus is descending into that darkness, thankfully only for 15 to 20 minutes until the species is dissolved because after then he, he leaves them. But when a person or a priest commits the sacrilege of receiving Jesus' body, blood, soul and divinity in a state of sin, <clears throat> you must be there with him to console him, to kiss him, to do the hours of the passion with him and relieve him of his suffering love in that soul. And as he received the kiss of Judas on that holy Thursday night, you will receive, you'll do that hour with him. And Jesus living in you is going to receive that kiss of betrayal. And you will receive it with him. And you, you will suffer that betrayal with him. And this is how you truly enter the hours of his passion. <clears throat> now, Jesus is being betrayed, I would say, more in this hour of human history than in any other time in human history. Therefore, receiving that kiss of his betrayer is very important act for you to do. But he received it with two aspects, sorrowful pain and love. Because even while Judas was betraying him, Jesus was loving him. But he also felt the deep sorrow that this soul that he created was going to go to hell. You must accompany Jesus in that hour of suffering on Holy Thursday night. So please do that. And I want to read you what our Lord gave me just 10 minutes before I came online. <clears throat> and I felt he was saying to me, read this to the, you know, to the people, his little children, he calls me. <clears throat> but before I do that, I want to do my prayer of fusion. Jesus, life of my soul, beat of my heart, love of my life. As I read this lesson, within which is a new heaven, a new creation, a new birth of your divine life and beauty, a new gift 
from the bountiful love of your divine self. I pray you to fuse yourself into me, that I may become the wisdom of God, to receive in my mind all the truths you want me to embrace, that I may become the divine love with which to embrace them, and that I may become the divine sorrow to grieve over all the refusals of these sublime truths. Open my mind, Jesus, and open my heart and the very depths of my soul that I may be consumed with your own <clears throat> ardours of love to receive all possible goods of our Heavenly Father's will that not only I but all may come to know him in, with and through you, dear Jesus, in the love of your Holy Spirit. Amen. Fiat. Mm -hmm. One more knowledge about my will raises the soul to such a height that the very angels remain stupefied and enraptured. And they confess to me incessantly, holy, holy, holy. So from the many things I have manifested to you about my will, you can comprehend what I want to make of you and how I love you and how your life must be a chain of continuous acts done in my will. I'll read you a little excerpt from the 8 p.m. hour of the Passion because we're approaching the great institution of the Holy Eucharist this week. And Jesus, uh, Louisa responds after that 8 p.m. hour, My sweet love, in this hour you transubstantiated yourself in bread and wine. O oh, Jesus, grant that everything I say and do may be a continual consecration of yourself in me and in all souls. O oh, Jesus, my sweet love, may I be your tiny host in order to enclose myself as within a living host, your entire be. Pray that prayer often when you go to Mass. I think I've included it in my recent little book on how to pray the Mass with the Hours of the Passion, which I hope you all got. Now I'm going to read you this lesson now that I've fused myself because of what Jesus says. And you confuse your listening into Jesus so that it's not you listening, it's the Holy Spirit listening in you to these words of Jesus. Excuse me, I need to have a drink of water. <clears throat> this is... <clears throat> I still can't get in my get rid of my crook. This is <clears throat> this is from volume eighteen, November the ninth, nineteen twenty five. <clears throat> I'll get Mary to read it because my voice is cracking up, and <clears throat> read it very slowly. Sure. Where am I going from here? Yeah. 
all that. But a whole lesson. Read it, slowly. read it slowly. I will. I was fusing myself in the holy divine volition according to my usual way to then do my adoration to my crucified good and since more than once while doing my acts in the supreme volition I had been caught by sleep which would never happen before. I had not completed the first thing nor done the adoration. So I said to myself, first I will do the adoration to the crucifix and then if I am not caught by sleep, I will fuse myself in the divine volition to do my usual acts. But while I was thinking this, my sweet Jesus came out from within my interior and placing his face close to mine, he told me, my daughter, I want you to fuse yourself in my will first coming before the Supreme Majesty to reorder all human wills in the will of their Creator, to repair with my own will for all the acts of the wills of creatures opposed to mine, will came out of us in order to divinize the creature and will do what we want. And when this will is rejected by them to do their own will, it is the most direct offence to their creator. It is to deny all goods of creation and to move away from his likeness. And do you think it is trivial that fusing yourself in my will, you place the whole of this will of mine as though on your lap, which, though it is one, brings its divinizing act to each creature and reuniting all these acts of my will together. You bring them before the Supreme Majesty to requite them with your will together with mine. With your love, redoing all the acts opposite those of creatures. And you press this same my will of mine to surprise the creatures once again with more repeated acts that they may know it, receive it within themselves as a prime act. Love it and fulfill this holy will in everything. Okay, out of the, I don't know right. cool. the adoration of my wounds, more than one does it for me, but giving me back the rights of my will as the prime act which I did towards man. This no one does for me. Therefore, it is your duty to do it, as you have a special mission about my will. And if sleep catches you while you are doing it, our celestial Father will look at you with love in seeing you sleep in his arms, seeing his little daughter, who even while sleeping, holds on her little lap all the acts of his will to repair them, requite them in love, and give to each act of our will the honour, the sovereignty, and the right that befits it. 
Therefore, first fulfill your duty, and then, if you can, you will also do the adoration of my wounds. Wow. <clears throat> so November the 9th, 1925, <clears throat> volume 18. Jesus is telling you that there are many, many souls, thousands upon thousands, who adore his wounds, amongst other things, in his passion. But what he's saying to her, my daughter, I want you to fuse yourself in my will first. Because when you do, you come before the Supreme Majesty to reorder all human wills in the will of their creator and repair with my own will for all the acts of wills of creatures opposed to mine. Do you see the great gift Jesus gives us in asking us continuously to fuse ourselves into his will before every single human act, prayer, etc., that we do. And that's why I insist on it so much, because Jesus repeats and repeats. And, and Louisa says in, at the very first sentence, I was fusing myself in the holy divine volition according to my usual way. But then her mind started thinking, oh, you know, like us, we do the same thing. Or oh, maybe I should do my adoration to the wounds of Jesus first because if I fall asleep, <clears throat> she was thinking that adoring Jesus' wounds was the more important thing to do, right? So she thought, if I do that first and then I fall asleep, um, I'm, I've already completed the most important thing. Now, we have moments like that when we say, what, what, why am I doing all this fusing, fusing, you know? <clears throat> why is Geraldine always telling us to fuse ourselves? <laughs> well, the reason I'm telling you is because I, I mean, I've, I've studied the Book of Heaven for 30 years and I've studied it uh, four or five times now. So... I know this is a principal act and Jesus calls it here. This is her office. This is what she's put on earth to do because this is what he did. This is what Jesus did when he was on earth. Read volume 12. He says, all I did on earth was fuse myself and my human acts into the Father's will, my Father's will. I lived inside the Father. He said, that's all I did on earth from my very first moment of my conception. So please read that again, volume 18, November the 9th, 1925. And Jesus says, do you think it's trivial? Do you think this fusing is so trivial that you're going to omit it because you think honouring my sacred wounds is more important? I bet we all think honouring Jesus' sacred wounds is more important and that's why I'm reading this to you now. <clears throat> Do you think this is trivial? that fusing yourself in my will, you play, because when you do this, you place the whole of this will of mine as though on your lap, which though it is one, brings the divinizing act of God to every creature. That's what you do. 
Now, I'll explain that to you. When I fuse my act, I've, I've explained it to you the last, at my retreat, but also in recent times. Do you remember me listing for you all the things that happen when you fuse one single human act into the divine will act? Do you remember me telling you what happens? <clears throat> I'll repeat it for you. Well, number one, number one is everything that exists in God and outside of God enters this act. Everything that exists. Number two, you activate the generative power of the divine will in all created things so that every created thing has a voice of adoration for its creator. So the little birds that sing in Australia, like the kookaburra laughing early in the morning, is adoring his, his creator because you have activated all the acts of adoration into his voice and song. All the other birds, it's the same thing. The buzzing of the bees, the radiation of the sun, everything is activated to adore its creator. That happens once you fuse your human act. Number two. A wedding takes place between the soul and God. Haven't got time to give you all the quotes, but I've sent this out to you on an email, so you, you should have checked it out, out by now. A wedding between you and God takes place. At this wedding, all of heaven comes to join in the feast. Our Heavenly Mother, Louisa, St. Joseph, the Trinity, the saints in heaven, the angels, they're all at this wedding feast of your act fused into the divine will. A new divine life is given birth to populate the kingdom. And if you do it properly, you will be birthing more than just one divine life. A new knowledge of the divine will is gifted to you. And if you do your act properly, that knowledge is disseminated into all creatures. So you are teaching, or Jesus is in you, to take his eternal word to every single creature from Adam to the last. You are allowing Jesus, the supreme exorcist, to exorcise the demonic from all human acts. Now, if those souls invite Satan back into their lives, that's their fault. But you have just done an exorcism. Just like exorcists on earth, you listen to them on YouTube, I'll bet you do because I have, they will tell you that if they perform an exorcism and Jesus himself said, if you exorcise the soul of the demons but that soul goes back to its former life, the demons will multiply themselves to come up and enter that empty space because one of the exorcists in America whom I like very much, he's a very beautiful man, he says they come back because nature abhors a vacuum and so they want to take up that empty space that you have even though you've been exorcised 
of the demons, you have invited them back in. This happens in confession too, when you've been forgiven and cleansed by Jesus, but you go back to your usual sins. Once you do that, it means you're slapping Jesus' face, right, because he's forgiven you, cast all your sins aside, and you prefer to go back. I'm not talking about, you know, just coincidental weaknesses here. I'm talking about actual actual sins. So in this act fused into the divine will, you allow Jesus, because Jesus is there, right? Not you. Jesus is in the act. And where, wherever Jesus lives, Satan cannot exist. He is not there. So it's an exorcism that takes place. In every act you fuse into the divine will. Now the other thing, and this is from the Book of Heaven, and I gave the quotes when I sent this email out. The Trinity is formed in your soul. This uh, whole series is about eternal communions in the divine will. If we get to that today, if we get to the reading we're up to today, the Trinity is formed in your soul. Is that not an eternal communion? And you have that available to you in every moment of your life. Volume 12, Jesus says he's frustrated with the sacramental communion of himself to souls. He's not frustrated with that. He's frustrated with those who say Mass only seldom, in some parishes now, priests don't say daily mass. They only say it once or twice a week or whatever. And Jesus says in volume 12, if you read it, I feel frustrated as if my desire to enter souls, to become one with them, depends on the decision of the priest when he thinks it's, you know, okay for him to say Mass. The same applies to confession now. In a lot of parishes in Australia, if you don't get to confession for the 15 minutes or half an hour it's available on Saturday evening, that's it. So the thing is, Jesus is becoming more and more frustrated in this new order of sacramental life because he's not able to gift himself to souls the way he wants to. So what does he do? He's God, isn't he? He can do everything. He tells us in the gospel, I can do the impossible. What's, what's impossible for man is possible for me. So he gives us this gift of living in the divine will where we can constantly fuse ourselves into him and a new holy communion on an eternal level takes place. He explains this in detail. Sacramental communion only lasts for 15 to 20 minutes until the species are dissolved. Those souls that live in the sanctity of the virtues, depending on their state of holiness, receive me only on that temporal level. But only souls who live in the divine will and fuse their communions into Jesus' eternal communion of himself at the first 
Passover meal, the Last Supper, which we're celebrating this Thursday. That's why I'm speaking about it to you. Only souls who live in the divine will, who receive him in himself, are receiving an eternal communion of himself, not only within themselves, but they are offering this eternal communion to all humanity. Now, wouldn't you like on Holy Thursday night to receive Jesus sacramentally but in his will and offer him to all humanity who have no access to the Mass, to the sacraments, and you can live in his priesthood and he make him available to everyone and give him the ultimate joy of what he wants to do. He wants to gift himself to all humanity. He wants to gift himself to that little abused child whose father comes to her room every night to abuse her. He wants to gift himself to young boys who are also sexually abused and raped by these predators. These little children who are enforced into a silence out of fear and shame Jesus wants to go to them and you are the means that he can visit them and gift them himself. Wouldn't you like to be that person, that channel for Jesus' desire? Wouldn't you like to visit every abused child? Wouldn't you like to enter the wombs of every pregnant woman who's considering abortion? and give his eternal communion to that little child that's about to be slaughtered and dismembered by the abortionist? Wouldn't you like to do that? Well, you've been given that power. And Jesus says it here in November the 9th, 1925, Volume 18. Louisa, if you do nothing else on earth, fuse yourself into my will because that is what happens when you do this act. Now, it's more important, he says here, if you read it properly, than all your devotional practices. You've got to stop and think about this because I'm telling you the truth. And if you, like Louisa, even volume 18, like Louisa's really living in the divine will here and she's slipping back into the thought, oh, oh I think I should do my adoration of Jesus' wounds first because that's more important. And he says, no, it's not. It's not more important. Mm -hmm. Now, you confuse that act, he says, right at the end, last paragraph. Once you fused yourself into my will, Louisa, then, which is your primary duty, right? Therefore, first, fulfill your duty, Louisa, that's fusion, if you can, then if you can, you can also do the adoration of my wounds. <laughs> so just think of that, please, 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 when you get tired of me saying, have you fused yourself, <laughs> all of your acts today, just think of that. This is extraordinary what Jesus is giving you. Your primary duty is to be a channel for his priesthood, his humanity on earth. He wants to do through you everything that he cannot do in every other soul.
And all you have to do is empty yourself. Empty yourself of yourself and your own will and all your own conceptions of what it means to be holy. Jesus' holiness wants to live in you. What do you know about what it means to be holy? Does anyone want to tell me? What do you know about what it means to be holy, James? It means that I no longer exist because everything about me is consumed with him. I'm divinized. I'm got Wonderful. Perfect answer. You know nothing, James, about what it means to be holy, correct? Nothing. <laughs> Any, anything you do know, and you do know a lot, but anything you do know has been a gift to you, correct, James, from the Holy Spirit? Absolutely, totally. Totally. So, but now our knowledge, even our knowledge, which is beautiful because it's been given to us by the Holy Spirit, even Jesus says now, he wants to magnify that knowledge in a new way. He wants to give us the ultimate knowledge of what it means for a soul to live inside of his own sanctity. And this is fusion. Fusing yourself in my will in another volume is, he says, to live in it, is to live in it. Now, when I get around to it after Easter, if I'm still alive after Easter, I want to do a special um, YouTube. I'm teaching people how to expand this fusion into rounds because this is our way of praying in the divine will. It's a new way of praying. It's not new in the sense it's never been done before because it was done in Jesus and Mary and Joseph and Louisa. It's not new. But it's a new way of praying that is not yet fully known in the church. Right? It's new in that regard. So this is what is living in the divine will. Now, when you pray in the divine will in this way, the knowledges of God, our father and mother, our beautiful parents, is gifted to you in the rounds. But it's the, the doing the rounds and the fusion of your acts is the means to acquire the knowledge and reading the book of heaven. But if you read the book of heaven and you don't do your duty, which Jesus has said, this is your duty, Louisa, to fuse yourself in my will and activate its generative power in humanity. That's your primary duty. Remember that? So when you understand your primary duty, then Jesus says, then you can add all the other things, you know, all your devotions and your prayers and your this and that. But your primary duty is fusion because why? Jesus lives in you to do these prayers. It's no longer Geraldine praying to God and interceding for this, that, and the other. I don't exist. James put it perfectly. I no longer exist. Jesus lives in me to do all these acts, these prayers, this love, everything. What do I know about holiness? Nothing, nothing, nothing. You're not listening to Geraldine. You know, people get the idea they think I'm some special person. 
I know nothing, I am nothing. I have a new identity. I'm a daughter of God. James is a son of God. And all you beautiful men out there, I can't see. You're sons of God now. You're not, you're not, your biological identity, right, that you got from your parents and grandparents and that, eventually dissolves into your true identity. This might shock you because Jesus says he's transfusing into you his own humanity. Eventually he will possess you entirely. And who is Jesus? The beloved son of the father. That's who you're becoming. Eventually, when he possesses you, that's who you will be. So all the genetic disorders we have, you know, the doctors will ask you, oh, has there ever been gallstones in your family? You know, because, you know, that's a genetic disorder that's come down from my parents or grandparents or something. But all that ceases to exist in the divine will. You're, you no longer are inheriting the disorders of your parents and grandparents and previous generations because once Jesus grows his humanity inside of you, all of those disorders will cease to exist. This is part of his exorcism. He's exorcising you from every disorder and disease. How is he doing that? Through fusion. <laughs> Talk about getting a COVID injection. Like, really. I mean, Jesus invented transfusion. Jesus invented it. He's been wanting to transfuse himself into humanity ever since Adam divorced himself from him. That's the whole meaning of the Bible, his desire to transfuse himself into humanity again because he wants to see new, new Adams throughout the earth. He wants to see the beauty of, of the reflection of his heavenly mother in every female. He wants to see Jesus in every male. This is the will of the Father. And eventually he's going to have his will. And that's called the kingdom of God on earth. So you will see, I mean, I'll still see your faces, your beautiful faces, but your soul will be inhabited perfectly, possessed by the Trinity. That's the last quote of Fusing Your Act. The Trinity will come to live inside of you. So, James, how are we going for time, James? We are seven minutes to six here. So um, if we're looking at an hour, we've got seven yes, minutes left. But we tend to go on till about um, 20 past or so. Um, Vicky, have you got your hand up? Yes, I, I need to ask Geraldine, if you fuse yourself at the beginning of the Mass, is that do you have to fuse yourself again as you're receiving the Holy Eucharist? Uh, you don't have to do any of this, Vicky, but yes, you fuse yourself prior to going to Mass. Preparation for Mass is very important. That's why I put the, the little book out I sent out, How to Pray the Mass Using the Hours of the Passion. Right? So I, I put a tiny introduction in that book and usually I get to Mass about sometimes more than an hour before Mass. And in that hour before Mass, I'm preparing myself for Mass through fusion. But there's a beautiful prayer Louisa does, and I've got it in, um, hang on, I'll get it for you. 
This book is called Daily Prayers Prayed by Louisa Picaretta. It's on my web page, Little Children in the Divine Will. And there's two beautiful prayers in preparation for Holy Communion. And there's two beautiful Thanksgiving prayers. So there's a preparation prayer for Holy Communion with our Blessed Mother. Huh? Now, this is kind of an extended communion prayer. Some of you might not have the ability to do this preparation because, you know, like like uh, Jenny is looking after her sick mother, etc., etc. You know what I mean. You might only arrive at Mass, you know, five minutes before it starts. But Vicky, as long as you say, Jesus, I love you, I fuse myself into you to pray this Mass in you, with you, and through you, you have fused the entirety of your Mass. But if you're very attentive during the Mass, you will be constantly entering his humanity to love with him, to suffer with him, and if you watch that video, Vicky, are you living? You're living in America, aren't you? Well, I said you're living in California. No, no, I'm in Florida, uh, but I, yeah, I, I watched it about five times. Oh, okay. And I sent it out okay. to everybody. Oh, that mass video, did you? Oh, yes. okay. Yes. Oh, good, good on you, Vicky. Well, that's a beautiful way to prepare for Mass because you're, it's, it only takes half an hour. You know, we, Mary and I watch it every day. To prepare before we do the Hours of the Passion, we take about two hours to do the uh, we, Hours of the Passion, not the whole book. Good Friday we'll be doing the whole book and watching the whole movie. Uh, on Good Friday, and we'll be pausing the movie, you know, where different stages of the Passion take place, and then doing that hour, you know, like the scourging, for example, we'll look at that, then we'll do that hour of the Passion on Good Friday. But Louisa did these prayers uh in preparation for Holy Mass. And, James, because we've got a little time, instead of going back to our Eternal Communions book, I think maybe God wants us to continue on this vein because we're, we're approaching Holy Thursday night. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to read you Louise's way of preparation for communion, right? Now, in a Novus Ordo Mass, you get very little time to do these prayers, but we go to a traditional Mass, Latin Mass, and there's much more silence in the Latin Mass for us, so we can do these long prayers. That's why I put that little book out, to help people pray the hours of the Passion during Mass. And after communion, Louisa has a prayer of thanksgiving with our Heavenly Mother. And then she has a beautiful prayer, I love other Jesus. Thanksgiving. What was that lady question that lady asked uh, James just then, Melissa? Uh, she said, what is the name of the mass video? And somebody's saying, is it available on YouTube? Yes, it is. It's called Meditation, A Meditation on the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass. 
Thank That's you. the title of the video. It is not available in Canada or Russia due in case I've got any Russians listening to this June. A meditation on the holy sacrifice of the mass. And um, it's one of the most beautiful videos you could ever watch because it incorporates um, sections of the movie, The Passion of the Christ, into the Mass. And it shows you all the different stages that Jesus is suffering in the Mass. And you can unite with it. And when you watch it, say it's 35-minute video, so when you watch it prior to going to Mass, your mass will change dramatically. Your participation will change dramatically. And uh, I encourage you to watch it, but I've had two people that are on my Zoom from Canada and on my email list, and they said, both of them said they could not get it, and when they double-checked, they said it was due to copyright issues. But it is available in the United States and Australia, so I'm not sure. Um, yeah, there's someone, Birgit Kramer, I hope I pronounced that right, Birgit, um, has put up the link. Original version too. Yeah, the link, once they click on the yeah, link, they don't they don't one. have to do that. Right. Apparently, there's a shorter version of it. Um, I haven't found that myself. Someone did send me the link one day. Say you've only got 10 minutes. If you watch the shorter version, it might be good for you, but I don't have that link if anyone can find it. Um, there's, a, there's a 15 minute I really, version. I'll find it. You, oh, good on you, darling. Thank you. Oh. Gee, it's wonderful to have people helping you, isn't it? Um, there's a 15-minute version. That's for you busy, busy people. <laughs> See, God thinks of everything, doesn't he? I have to have a 15-minute 15 15 minute version for this person. Um so I'm going to read to you Louise's preparation because it's so beautiful. And, of course, Our Lady was the first to receive Jesus. I mean, even in the hours of the Passion, Louise says, I... I'm sure Our Lady received him, you know, but she doesn't mention how. But in in um, in the writings of um, the City of God by the Venerable Mary the Greta, it does tell you that uh, Holy Communion was given first to Our Lady before the Apostles, which of course makes sense, you know, because she gave him his humanity. She gave him his life, you know, on earth. So she must be the first. So it's natural for us and for Louisa to prepare for Holy Communion with Our Lady because Our Lady was the first who received communion in the divine will. Of course Our Lady had to receive it first because she had to repair and make up for all of us who received communion so poorly and for even for the saints who received communion in the sanctity of the virtues, Our Lady had to perfect every single communion that has ever been received. She perfected it in herself. So that God would not, is there some way that I can watch the original version? Well, where do you live, Milagros? Where do you live? Um, hi, I am in Peru and I just went to the link that they post uh, on the chat and it said uh, the video, the content of this video is blocked. 
uh, ngayon so sa so is there some way that I could uh, watch the video the original version? No, uh, Milagros. When I say it's blocked, it means the same for Canada. Um, Milagros is is talking from the Philippines, from Cebu. No, and, I am um, from Peru, Lima. Oh, Nina. So, oh, Nina. Lima, You're... Lima, Lima, Peru. Oh, Lima. I'm sorry, Lima. I thought you said Cebu, the Philippines. No, you're you're um, talking from. Um, say it again. Uh, from say, South, the place, um, say, say the place you are say, if, calling from. South Peru. America. It's Lima, Lima in Peru. Lima. Lima, okay, thank you. Thank you. Lima in Peru. And and the video is blocked there, right? So this is due to copyright issues, and it's the same in Canada and Russia, but apparently in America and Australia. I have no idea how you overcome that, Milagros. Is that your name? Yes. Yes, Geraldine. Oh, thank you. Um, I've no idea, but there there are little tricks to the trade that maybe people who understand that about downloading videos and because um, um, it's just important to talk to someone who understands a little bit about that. You might be able to access it. James, do you know? Well, uh, Paula has put a link because it's things you can't access on YouTube. You can often access through Vimeo. So, um, Milagros, if you've looked in chat, uh, Paula has very kindly given us a link to Vimeo. So you might well be able to watch it through Vimeo if you can't watch it on YouTube. Yes, okay. James, I just, I just got through on Vimeo. I'm in London. And it came through straight away. Great. Now, gig, try, try that, Milagros. Try, try it on Vimeo. Go to the chat room. Okay. Look at the link. Okay. Oh, thank you, Paula. That's fantastic. Um, I can tell <clears throat> people now on my email that are in Canada because they wanted to access it. So I, I really appreciate that, Paula. Thank you, Paula. Um, yes. I could open the video, yes. Thank you. Oh, wonderful. It works. <laughs> yes. Uh, Thank you. Fantastic. That's fantastic. Oh, everyone's going to be so pleased. Um, so what we're going to do now is we're going to pray in preparation for our Holy Communion, our Sacramental Communion with our beloved Mama Mary. Oh, Heavenly Mother, the hour draws near. A few more moments and Jesus will come to settle in my poor heart. Oh, Mother, sweetest Mother, take your little child in your arms and sweetly rocking her in your maternal arms, bring her to Jesus. And while you, O oh Mother, will cover all my being with your most holy hands, put to sleep my thoughts, my affections, my desires, and all that is not God. Touch my forehead with your divine fingers and make me understand who Jesus is and the great gift he makes himself to me, giving me all of himself, so that knowing him, I might be able to love him more. O oh, Mother, touch my eyes, and while you purify them for me, make me worthy for looking only at Jesus. Touch my ears, purify them, and place your fingers on them as a seal, 
so that they may open only to listen to Jesus' voice. Touch my mouth, and while you purify my lips and my tongue, O Mother, you yourself, intercede for me, so that penetrated by your voice, Jesus may concede to me what is only of his will. O oh, Mother, touch my hands, and while you purify them, dispose them in such a way as to be able to embrace and hug Jesus. O oh, Mother, touch my feet and purify them in such a way as to be able not to walk, but to fly always more towards Jesus. O oh, Mother, while you hold me tightly in your arms, look at my poor heart. Take it between your hands and shake off the dust by which it is soiled. Purify its affections and grant that my desires may be so ardent as to be able to continuously wound the heart of my Jesus. O oh, Mother, in this heart, cold as it is, pour all your love. Fill it with your virtues. Bless it for me with your most holy hands, so that now that Jesus is coming, he may find it enriched by you and will never be able to reject it. Mother, give one of your maternal glances to all of my being after having purified and beautified me. Be so kind as to present me to Jesus. Look at me still, Mother. I would like you to take away something from this miserable ego of mine. Don't you see how I still need you to completely destroy this ego? You alone can do it. Therefore, you yourself ask Jesus for it, and I am sure that he will want to deny you nothing. O oh, Mother, put Jesus' mind into mine to be able to understand him with his own intelligence. Put his eyes into mine to be able to look at him with his own eyes. His hearing into mine to be able to hear him with his own hearing. His mouth into mine to be able to receive him with his own tongue his arms in mind to be able to embrace him with his own arms so that he may no longer be able to detach himself from me, his feet into mind so that wherever I go, he may find me, but always in himself and he always in me. His heart into mind so that upon Jesus' coming, he may not find anything except himself and that I may be all hidden in him so that he will not find my love but his own love. Grant, O oh Mother, that my heart may be the little host consecrated and transformed all into him in such a way as to be pig's tabernacle and continuous life of love and of immolation with Jesus himself. Now, Mother, I'm content. Take me in your arms to the altar. You also descend with him into my heart, and all three of us together will sing the hymn of thanksgiving, and you all the angels and the saints of paradise come around me and accompany me to Jesus. So that's one of Louise's prayers. 
in preparation for Holy Communion. Beautiful. Yeah. So you see how, James, were you going to say something, James? I'd like to just say that um, Kathy, Kathy uh, Lewandowski, she's had her hand up for about the last 10 minutes and so probably has a, um, um, a, quest a question for you. Okay, Kath Catherine. Hi, Geraldine. Um, I actually wanted to ask this question from the beginning. So you mentioned before, I think we even said our first prayer, that this, this um, Easter was a very special one, an important one. And I wondered uh, why it would be more important than any other. Well... It's important, like it, in this sense, we're living in the present moment of God. We're not living in time, right? When we enter the divine will in continuous fusion, we have entered eternity. And every present moment is, you might say, a moment in which we have the power to invest in time. That's where everyone else lives, right? <laughs> in time. Yes. Uh, we, we have the power to invest in time because Jesus is living in us. The fullness of his divine love, his divine mercy, where has she gone? Catholic. Oh, there you are, Catherine. <laughs> uh, <laughs> where, where is she? You bounced, you bounced off the top rung down to her. <laughs> uh, so, but I have an intuitive sense myself. It's, uh, I could say, it's palpable inside of me that this Easter is very important because I can't imagine in the history of the world there's been greater impact of the demonic in the human race. And since I'm nearly 80 years old, I don't know if I'll see another Easter so, you know, the, the thing now is the hour. <laughs> now is the hour, Catherine. Um, the other thing is that the Holy Spirit has been speaking a lot more prophetically to little children in our own time. Okay. Going back, going back to um, the vision uh St. Bernadette in the mid-19th century, the visionaries of Fatima were little children, you know. And, I, I, and I've noticed this uh, Garabandal, you know, little children. Our Lady and our Lord have this amazing understanding that when they give a prophetic message to little children, it's less less likely to be contaminated, you know, by the mm -hmm. human interest. So little, we're little children. You know, we don't know how to discern uh, uh, false mystics from true mystics and all the rest of it. We don't know that. But as little children, it fused into the divine will. God speaks to us. I'm sure he speaks to you, Catherine, too. You know, I, well, I feel that same intuition that you feel, and it's sort of an urgency. I just didn't know if there was something that you could say beyond that um, definitively, but well, I feel what no, I feel. No, I can't say definitively because if Jesus lives in me, when he was asked the same question, he says the answer that I'm going to tell all of you. Okay. But what did he say, Catherine, when he was <laughs> asked the same question? It's in the gospel. When he was asked, when is this all going to happen? 
Well, it's a you month. Know. He is. It's now. Now he said only the father, father knows. <laughs> oh, he I thought you meant only. about his kingdom. I thought you meant about his kingdom is well, before you also, now. You know, he said only the father yeah. knows that day and time. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, he it's about say, the, only the father see, knows. Most of the, he said the day and time. Yeah, so we can yeah. have only the father knows. So, yeah, the day. Yeah, so we, we can ready. have. We can know can you uh, repeat, when it's close. Can you repeat that again, please, just so that we can hear you properly? You know, I it was. Recently in my mind, Jesus said, if I remember right, only the Father knows the day and the time. He didn't say, Correct. only the Father knows the year. He didn't <laughs> say, only the Father knows the decade. He only said, only the Father knows the day and the time. But he also, yes. Christ told the apostles, while he walked so we, the planet, he said, the kingdom of heaven is is with you now. You are you are living in this kingdom now. So um that's no, what I was no, saying. No, 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 no. He did not say that at all. He didn't say the kingdom of heaven is in you now. It's no with no no you. right. Not in you, you no, yeah. I didn't mean that. We're not, we didn't have that, but he said the kingdom of heaven is upon you essentially. You are is you with, among us, it is with you. How, how is it with them? It's with them in him, in yes, him, yes. Uh, See, so you, you've got to be careful of your prepositions. Because when you when you said it's in you now, no, it's not in you now. It's no, it's I don't think I said that. But okay. Oh, okay. Oh, if you didn't say it, I'm sorry, but I have to jump. I have to jump in there because some people misinterpret some of those words. It's yes. even the translations can change in different translations of the Bible. So you have to be very careful. But Jesus even said to Louisa in the book of heaven, even her punctuation marks were important. He said, do not leave anything out because even her prepositions and the way she expresses what he's telling her, because he's speaking in her, um, are very important because, say, the difference between saying with you and in you. That's a significant difference. With you, if you say the kingdom of heaven is with you, it's different to saying the kingdom of heaven is within you. You see the difference? Now, I I don't want to go further into this because it's, it's sort of argumentative, but I want to just say that I don't go into, Catherine, where you've jumped again to some other place. I don't go in, I don't go into announcing which prophecies I believe and which I don't. Because our Lord's made it very clear to me, uh, my office is to talk about what he says in the book of heaven. Now, even even in the book, because if I go down that other track, there's certain prophecies I believe are genuine and true, and we know what all those ones are. But there's a, there's a great number of new prophets speaking in our age. Now, I'm not saying I'm not saying I know which ones are true and false, but I do know there are some of them that are very genuine, right? What, what it seems to me is there's a great surge in understanding through the gift of prophecy that we are on the cusp of significant events and chastisements. And that equates with, well, for example, <coughs> Francis Hogan, who is a well-respected 
a scholar of scriptures, right? She's well respected. As she said, and I've only watched her once, by the way, because I don't watch all these other speakers and videos. She did say in the one video I watched that she totally agrees with what is being presented currently about we are on the cusp of the era of the great chastisement. So to answer your question, and she, she makes her decision based on her understanding of the scriptural, um, the knowledge of the scriptures and her profound knowledge, I might add, of the book of heaven. So I think she's a genu very genuine person with a lot of study and a lot of knowledge. So I would go with that. So to answer your question, Catherine, that's why I think this Easter, every Easter is important, let's face it, but to you living in the divine will, to each one of you, it's important how you celebrate the sacramental life this Easter and how you live in the rounds of the Passion. Because only you, let me repeat this, only you, only souls that live in his will through fusion of these acts have the capacity to ameliorate, I use that word ameliorate, because the chastisements are going to come. That, that's, uh, it's even in the book of heaven. Jesus said they're going to be worse than the, to Louisa, they're going to be worse than ever has been experienced before, worse than the flood, worse than every, anything else. And that is exactly what St. Faustina, um, um, the visionary of, uh, the visionaries of Garabandal said, um, souls that have actually gone to hell, like Saint uh, Jacinta, Francesco, Lucia, have actually seen hell, you know, uh, the chastisements are going to be far worse than the world has ever seen before. So our Easter, let me put it to you, Catherine, our Christmas is now every moment. Our Easter is every moment. In every moment, Jesus dies, and in every moment, Jesus rises in every act done in his will. So um, it's not for us. We do not exist in time. Of course we have to. I look at my calendar to see when my next appoint, dentist appointment is, so I don't want any questions about that. I think I've dealt with that before. I'm not stupid. You know, I do have a calendar and I have to watch the clock to know when I'm coming on Zoom. But in my soul, I don't exist in time because if I'm fusing myself into Jesus, he exists in eternity. But even on earth, he had to follow a certain time frame when he went to the temple, for example, to perform certain rites all of those things, but in his soul he was living inside the Father's will. Now, your Easter is the Easter for all humanity. Let me put it to you this way again. I repeat again, only you have the power to divinise every human act and the Easter and the death and rising of every soul, only you, because Jesus wants to inhabit your humanity. He is in heaven now, and our lady is in heaven. St. Joseph and Louisa are in heaven. They're looking to your humanity in which to incarnate themselves so that they can act inside of you to take to all humanity 
the, the full consummation of their own acts. Now, as we know from prophecy, most of humanity is going to refuse these acts. Most of humanity is going to refuse these acts. But you still are going to like, because God never stops loving and never stops giving, you're going to gift these acts to all humanity, no matter what, whether they accept them or refuse them. Jennifer, uh, Josephine, are you? have you got your hand up, darling, to say something? Hi, Prophet. Hello. And Josephine? Hello? Yeah. yeah. I have a question. Yeah. Going back to the time you were saying that we have the capacity to give communion in the divine will to all souls. I can appreciate yes. being very freely given to the uh, little souls, the aborted souls, uh, souls that are persecuted. Yeah. But for the souls that are after receiving sacrilegious communion, does the effects of our communion go to their divine version? Yeah, the effects of their communion, yes. The, the, the souls that, like Judas, for example, refuse the gift, you know, what Jesus was offering with him was the gift of salvation, redemption, everything. And, and more than that. But Jesus never stopped loving him and offering it to him right up till the end until he actively rejected it, right? But he did, Jesus never stops offering the gift, even to hardened sinners, because that's in the hours of the passion. Mm -hmm. you, you read the hours of the passion properly. God never stops loving even hardened sinners. It's only when they actively, by their own will, reject that, that he cannot give it to them. But that, that perfect act that he's offering is correct. You said correctly. That goes back inside the womb of the Trinity. Jesus says that in the book of heaven. We take it back into ourselves, awaiting, you know, it to be drawn down, which by you, souls that live in the divine will, we draw down these acts that have been offered to souls that are rejected but we can put our I love you and I thank you and I bless you on all of these rejected acts. So say, for example, when you receive Holy Communion in the divine will, it's Jesus receiving himself again, like he did in the Last Supper, right? And in that reception of himself, he's repairing for all the sacrilegious communions that will ever be done or have ever been done, right? So when you receive your communion at Mass in the divine will, because it's not you receiving Jesus anymore, it's Jesus receiving himself in a divine manner, all the sacrilegious communions are repaired in the divine justice of God, in these acts of reparation. You're still looking like there's a question there, Josephine. Is so there another you, question? You did, say, you did actually answer it, that the, the effects of our us people in the divine will fuse receiving communion to give communion to all then if the person refuses it, it goes back into the Trinity. So you have answered yes. my question. Thank you very much. Yes. It goes but, back but Geraldine, to Geraldine, this is Chris. This is Chris. Um, yeah. Okay. Uh, okay, so if, okay, so I I think that in order, I don't know, just, just um, hear me and then correct me, please. So then the truth is we are, becoming a channel for his priesthood. He yes. loves 
everyone, no matter. We're looking at it. Can, I mean, the way I I look at this and I go from the first man to the last man, the prayer that you just pray, prayed in that communion. I pray that I pray that for the from the first man to the last because I don't I know nothing. Jesus is the priesthood in me. And from what I see, it looks really bad. Even Judas, it looks bad that he he went straight, blah, blah. But the truth is, if I pray this in this time, the, the, the where there is no time, I pray that now in my in my in my act of receiving communion. And I pray it for all from the last first man to the last man, and I go in, the truth is in the, in the volumes, in one of the last volumes, and I, in their thirties, that Mary and Jesus in the last hour of the, when people are in the death, and in, in that hour after they've died, Mary and Je Jesus visit them. And we do right. not know what our prayers do for the, these souls. So that's how I look at that. And I'm, I'm correct me, please. Thank you. That's all I yes. want to say. No, I'm not going to correct you, Christine. By the way, it's lovely to hear you speak again. I'm not going to correct you because you're correct. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, in, that, in that hour of dying, when we're dying, Jesus and Mary still do not give up on us because um, the science, medical science, for example, does not even know the moment the soul, you know, leaves the body. It's like, how do we know? There's a time frame when the soul is still able to say it's yes to God because Jesus visits, you're quite correct, visits that soul and gives it one more chance just to say one yes, one yes. That's all they have to do. But he gave Judas that one chance when he allowed Judas to kiss him and, and he prayed and with his gazes of love, he was trying to tell Judas, don't, don't, don't do this. And he would have pursued him in his soul to give him at least another chance not to suicide but to accept forgiveness. He never gives up. The Holy Spirit, Jesus, never gives up. But, but St. Peter who betrayed Jesus three times, you know, that was a mortal, you could, could say that's a mortal sin. He was saved. Why? Because he wept and cried and had true contrition and he went before Our Lady and she interceded for him and he accepted, he accepted the grace of forgiveness. Right. So when you're dying... Uh, Louisa has a beautiful prayer consecrating her dying into Jesus dying because did you know, oh, this is such a beautiful truth, when Jesus died on the cross, he prepared the death of each and every soul, the perfect divinized dying of each and every soul. So in all of those last hours of his dying, when he surrendered his last breath to the Father, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit, that divine act is actually there waiting for you and every dying person to take down, to divinise your dying. Remember that when you're dying. Remember that at the moment of your dying. Jesus is giving you the gift of his own dying in which to fuse yourself so that your dying will be a divine dying all those last hours of your life on earth. So beautiful. Barbara, did you have something you wanted to yes. say? Very quick. Barbara? Yes, thank you. Three things, Geraldine. Thank you for that meditation on the mask. Uh, yesterday, we uh, saw with some friends the Passion of the Christ on the big screen, 
And this morning when I opened up that meditation, I was really, really sobbing. And I, we are, our parish had the fortune of a, a priest that not only does the Novus Artist, but also the, the Trinity Mass. And I went to him this morning, and after seeing that, I said, Father, now I know why you love the Latin Mass so much. Uh, number two, uh, in Francis Hogan, it's called The Little White Prayer Book, and I've been in community with uh, Jenny Troy. Uh, in that book, somewhere, uh, it says, before you go to Mass, claim the divine version of that Mass in addition to everything else that you've said about fusion. So that, I think, is important. Number three, I received a couple of days ago from a website called Louisa AWL. And what, what they sent out is asked for three days of prayer and fasting, which ends today, that on, on, on March the 25th, which is the Feast of the Annunciation, of course, that's been transferred. This is when the Jewish people celebrate Hero. And also, yes. Louisa, when she died on March the 4th, also died on Purim. And so in this, there is a command prayer, which you can find that was written. And since our Annunciation uh, is being transferred one day after the Day of Mercy, they are calling that day the Eclipse of the Annunciation of Mother Mary, because on that day, this will be the eclipse of the sun. It will also be, the astronomers will be able to see the devil comet that is headed for Earth. It's somewhere in Aries, wherever that is. And also, uh, on that day, uh, will be also, because it's transferred, it would be, again, like the Feast of Purim. So there is a beautiful prayer. It's command prayer about deliverance, begging for mercy. And that has been, was an eye-opener to me because I live in a large Hasidic communion, community. So just bringing that, I did not know that she died on that feast day. So I just want to thank yes. you again, Geraldine, for all the work that you do, because I do watch Frances Hogan. I, I just find she's a tremendous teacher, even her all her scripture work, it's, it's beyond, beyond, beyond. So all you gifted, beautiful women. So I just want to bring that up because that video brings tears. And I actually, I'm going to put it on my screen and I'm going to watch it 30 times until it is embedded in my heart. Because when I go to Latin, I don't go that often. I have no idea what is going on. So on that video, you have the front of the priest. No, you know, and then I could see it. And I thought, wow, you know. And yeah. I was, I was wow. crying in, in confession today because I could understand my priest who loves it. Uh, and he would do every mass in Latin because today I went to yeah. Novus Ordinance. The mass was over in 20 minutes. You know? Yeah, that's right. So, uh, <laughs> wow. It's just thank you, Geraldine. And I gave that video to everybody. I want to send it out to, to our priest, Father Ken, so he can discern and get it out. You know, because one of the things is people who go to mass in general do not understand the mass and if they understood the mass and that they were at calvary then they would appreciate it. it's all bad catechesis so there's a beautiful priest by the yeah. name of father jonathan myers who lives in indiana and he actually passed out to his parishioners yesterday at palm sunday he's promoting the seeing the passion across the he actually got the theaters to run it in the community and it's going to run for the entire whole week and he passed out every person who came into mass yesterday got a piece of paper about the movements of the priest and how it fit in with calvary and he said this is why people are not going to mass it's not they don't believe the eucharist they don't even know what's going on so thank you again. I, it, I'm i still crying about uh, seeing that movie and seeing that video. And I'm just going to, I'm just going to watch it and watch it until it doesn't matter now. You know, all I have to do is go to mass and just get immersed in, into uh, 
into the passion, the Calvary. And it will yes. be there. So thank you again. I'm so glad I at least got to say hello to you. <laughs> Barbara, Barbara, everything you said is wonderful. And I, I'd have to say, Barbara, when I gave my recent retreat at Marion Valley and um, when 55 retreatants saw that video, they were all weeping. Yes. Even the men were weeping. You have and to. And I want to explain, to you, I want to uh, take something else you said about the Feast of Purim because I've, I've written a bit about that in some of my books. The, the re when Our Lady appeared at Fatima, she had uh, the star of Esther on the hem of her cloak, her dress. And Where was that? that? Is, uh, in, uh, Our Lady of Fatima. Oh, Our okay. Lady of Fatima. Okay. Her, you'll see it on all her statues. There's this star. Now, that star represents Esther. And it's a significant star. And the reason Our Lady appeared on the 13th of every month, because that was the Feast of Purim. Wow. In, the Old, in the Old Testament, Esther saved the genocide mm -hmm. of her people from the evil Haman on that feast. And God spoke. Uh, said, this feast must be celebrated in perpetuity to celebrate the salvation of God's people, the Jewish people, from the genocide that was intended by Haman. When um, it's on the 13th and 14th of every month, you can check it, out, uh, check it all out because the ancient calendars are slightly different. But that is why Our Lady appeared on the 13th of every month because she is the new Esther. Right. She, she came at Fatima to save her people from the genocide of the devil, the, 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 the spiritual genocide of Satan. And she is the new Esther. So every time Our Lady appears, there is a significance hidden in the way she dresses, in the time and day she appears, which a lot of people don't understand. Now, that Feast of Purim was ordered by God to be celebrated in perpetuity till the end of the world. And what you expressed to us just then was that that on the, um, when Louisa died, you know, March the 4th, and on, on this current eclipse, this Feast of Purim is indicative of all the hidden, now most people won't understand this, and the reason of the eclipse is also has a hidden significance because basically the eclipse the the um the kingdom of the divine will that is reigning in you and being brought to earth by you is going to eclipse the kingdom of satan which is currently ruling in almost every country of the world and this is the work of the divine will it's the final crushing of Satan's head by uh, Our Lady and Louisa. Our Lady and Louisa are like the new Esthers, you might say. Right. If you get to read that book on the Esther, uh, read it again. It's a short book and you'll love to read it and you'll understand there's also about three YouTube movies on, on this story, which are well worthwhile watching. But um, How would I Esther find... was... Where are you, Barbara? Your hand is no, in I front said of the... it's on. It's a movie of Esther on the YouTube. That's, that's correct, yeah. There's about three movies about Esther. Yeah. So, um, you know, they won't have the full 
fullness of it, but one of them is quite good actually because right. it gives and much it gives much more of the Jewish um, tradition yeah. and understanding. Now, what each one of you is a new Esther. That's James, right. That's what we're told. And you, command you prayer to... is absolutely beautiful, and it's exactly how Esther probably would have prayed, and that's what we were doing. I'm going to keep doing that because when you talked about a special Easter, there's no, and I'm 84 and I have a bad heart and I could stop at any moment, but you know what? I'm just so filled with the spirit that uh, I don't even feel like I'm 84, <laughs> but you know, the good. privilege good. of living at this time. And then he chose me a little nothing. You just have to cry. <laughs> I mean, my whole life, I've tried to come here. I've had a lot, a lot, a lot of problems with contractors. But every moment, I just, I don't want to talk about anything. I don't want to read about anything. I don't want to know about Even if I to say, I just want to know what the Book of Heaven is saying. I want to try to do the rounds better. And now that I've gotten <laughs> tuned with you, when I found Jenny Troy, I just don't want to miss anything. You know, and I just want to tell everybody, do not understand <laughs> but we have a little Santa call. It's little, but you know what? It's Tom. You know, that was uh, Tony Hickey said, if it's just two, you've got a big prayer group. So it's not the numbers. It's just coming together. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you. I can't so, tell, tell you thank you enough. James wants to talk. Well, I just want to say, I, I need to get to mass soon. And it's we've been on nearly two hours. So we probably have <laughs> to be winding up. You've got to yell out, James. You've got to sometimes yell. <laughs> I've got to stop these ladies from sharing these wonderful gifts with all of us. <laughs> Is that okay? Right. James, James, right. James, before you go, yes, would you be able to um, email me that um, movie? I, I don't know how to access it any other what, way. What I'm going to do is I've, I've taken the links. Larry's asked for us to be sent out. Jenny will send out the links on her email so that you can access oh, it. Oh, good. Okay. Thank you so much. Beautiful. Thank you. Um, right. Sorry to bring everything towards an end, but um, that's that's what's going on. Is there anything else that you wanted to say before we do the prayer um, um, for the glorification of Louisa Picaretta, Geraldine? Oh, oh no. I want you to get to Mass. And I, I think you should just say the prayer yourself, James, okay. to shorten the... To shorten this. Okay, I'll do that then. In the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Oh, Holy Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we praise and thank you for the gift of holiness of your servant, Louisa Picaretta. Heavenly Father, she lived in your divine will, under the action of your Holy Spirit, and in conformity with your Son who is obedient to death on the cross. She became your pleasing victim and host and thus cooperated in the work of redemption of all humanity. Her virtues of faith, obedience and humility and her love for Christ, your son and his body, the church, prompt us to ask you for the gift of her glorification on earth. Through Louisa, may your glory shine before all and your kingdom of truth, justice, peace, and love spread over the whole world in the charism of fiat, your will be done on earth as in heaven. We pray that through Louisa's sharing in your son's merits, we may obtain from you, Father, the particular grace that we seek. With the intention of fulfilling your, um, of fulfilling your divine will, amen, fiat. Fiat. Let's pray together the Our Father. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you Geraldine. Wonderful session today. Thank you all. And a very blessed evening. Thank you, James. Thank you, Geraldine. Thank you.
Thank you very much. Thank you. What a wonderful. Thank you, Geraldine. God bless you. Thank you, James. Thank you, James. Have a wonderful day. Thank you. Thank you. Have a happy Holy Easter and James. Okay. Easter. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you.